fields deflect them. The more magnetically active the sun is, the more cosmic rays are deflected, leaving fewer markers in ancient trees and ice cores. Magnetism has long been used to deflect charged particles on Earth, too. Cathode ray tubes and TV sets do so to create a picture. Oxfordshire, England. At the Rutherford Appleton Advanced Physics Laboratory, British professor Mark Lockwood demonstrates how easily magnetic fields deflect cosmic rays. A simple beam of electrons created in a laboratory behaves in the same way as cosmic rays upon hitting the sun's magnetic field. This glass case contains a green beam of electrons that are physically similar to cosmic rays. Lockwood will simulate the sun's magnetic field with two metal coils. When I pass electric current through a coil, I generate a magnetic field. And so if I turn the current up, I increase the magnetic field inside, put inside, and I start to deflect the beam. And the more I turn the current up, the larger the magnetic field, and the more the deflection. Just like the experiment, when the sun is at its solar maximum every 11 years, the sun deflects more cosmic rays away from Earth. So the number of sunspots appears to be directly related to the amount of cosmic ray deflection. This all ties together with events during the Maunder Minimum. The carbon-14 data from trees reveals that the cosmic ray flux increased during this period, which suggests the sun's magnetic field became less active and the spots almost vanished from the surface. We had the Maunder Minimum, where there were few sunspots that were higher than normal flux cosmic rays. We can find other examples like that and we can find periods like recent times when the sun's solar activity has been unprecedentedly high and the cosmic rays have been low as, as a result. Every 100,000 years or so, the Earth goes through a major ice age due to a change in the shape of its orbit around the sun. Our orbit isn't a perfect circle and fluctuates over time putting the Earth either closer or further away from the Sun. At its most elliptical, there is a 23% difference in solar radiation between the two most extreme points in the Earth. Right now, it's only 